Kolkata is angry. And Kolkata is angry because it is bad enough a city experiencing one brutal rape, but it becomes an ultimate tragedy when a city experiences two brutal rapes in the same period of time. It was on the 9th of August, most of you know by this time, when a junior doctor, a 31-year-old girl, was brutally, horribly, mercilessly gang-raped in one of the premier teaching hospitals of our city. Human crime, human perversion, human acts of brutality can happen in any country, any city, any place. Human perversion is not new and even though we hate it from the bottom of our hearts, it is going to recur again. But what happened after this rape when the body of this young girl was discovered was no less a rape of the law and order mechanism of our state. Kolkata police force, who probably in their history of more than 150 years, has solved one of the many, many, many puzzling cases, like all capable, intelligent police forces of our country. The police comes to the scene and through a series of inexplicable, amateurish, stupid, knee-jerk actions. You have probably heard it, you know of it by heart by this time. The first response was to record a case of almost accidental death, unnatural death. Within a few minutes this was followed by the family being informed by somebody who's not yet been identified that this is a case of suicide. And that was followed up by a post-mortem in the same institution at lightning speed. At lightning speed. Even before the primary biological evidences were collected from the scene. The post-mortem happens literally in a matter of minutes. And after the post-mortem, the entire establishment, the, the police, the college authorities, and probably with the invisible involvement of the government in the background, they were in an, they were in an unholy hurry to cremate the body as soon as possible. Has the family at all had a view of this young girl who had promised the family, a very middle class family, a very middle class parents, who through a lot of difficulty were bringing up this young girl to be their hope in life. The family probably didn't even get a good look at the dead body. So one brutal gang rape which was an act of human perversion, was quickly followed by, a, by an equal act of constitutional brutality. It was a constitutional rape of the law and order mechanism of West Bengal in particular and India in general. And you know why? Because under the, under the 100,000 worded constitution of India, the state law and order is under the state government. In the same way that the central law and order like your ED, your CBI, your BSF and obviously the Indian army is under the central government. And repeatedly, whether it, whether it, was, it is with Arushi Talwar, whether it is with the murders in Raj, with the, with the uh, suspected deaths in Rajasthan, whether it is with Sushant Singh Rajput, and similarly with this girl in Kolkata, time and time and time again, India and Indians have been a helpless, mute witness to the fact that governments after governments, state governments after state governments, 
will treat the police force as their personal chaprasis. So what is happening today is a complete cynical manipulation of the state police force who are at the beck and call, who are at the beck and call of the state governments today more so. It's a pathetic situation. You remember the Pankhawalas for the Sahibs? You remember the Chaprasis and, Ar and the Ardalis who were, who were moving around the feudal lords of once colonial India? The white Sahibs have been replaced with the brown Sahibs. The colonial feudality has been replaced by an independent feudality. And in spite of our judiciary, in spite of our media, the shamelessness of the political parties, the shamelessness, irrespective of whether it is a Trinamool Congress in Bengal, it is a Congress government somewhere else, it is a coalition government in some other state, this has become the great Indian disease. The great Indian disease, where in a macabre show of how influential it is, in a ferocious show that I am the state government, I am the chief minister, I am the law minister, I am the home minister. So I can twist and turn any criminal act, any investigation. I can harass any citizen. I can put any fictitious case on any person by using the law and order mechanism of my state. It is worse than what the zamindaris used to be a hundred years ago. You remember Amir Khan's Lagan? This is Lagan 50 times over. And when in a day's time this country stands up and celebrates its Independence Day, let it remember that the state law and order mechanism is not independent of the brutal manipulation from state governments in our country, whatever be the state. It is West Bengal today, it is Maharashtra tomorrow, it will be Rajasthan day after, it will be Kerala next. So is this not a question this mother of democracy needs to address? Is this not a question that has to emerge in today's India through all our patriotic fervor? One can understand that in a real world there will be one or two isolated instances. But once this has become a systemic disease in our country, and this systemic disease is reaching its toxic lethal levels, who will stand up and take notice? Who? Half the media is either sold to the central government, the other half is sold to the state governments. Today the doctors are on strike and as the doctors go on strike, the only time the public conscience, the only time when the public conscience surfaces is when the doctors are at the receiving end of the human equation. Every minute the doctors are being reminded, it is your duty to serve the people, it is your duty to serve the sick. It is not the duty of a police force to conduct an impartial investigation. It is not the duty of the state governments of the 30 odd states of India to enable its police force to function with a spine, to function with a conscience, with a function with a brain. It is only we doctors who will be reminded time and time and time again that it is only we are the last remaining profession in the country who are supposed to have a sense of duty. Today, I share every ounce of the anger that every doctor, every doctor, India has nearly a million doctors. And through the minds and through the brains and through the hearts of one and every, each and every of these one million doctors in our country, we are angry. The city is angry. The profession is angry. 
And if there is one thing that the Indian society does not want on the eve of the Independence Day in 2024 is the cynical, brutal rape of the law and order mechanism by the political feudal class whatever be the city, whatever be the state. The remaining scenario is very predictable. In the same way that the 2008 case of Arushi Talwar was not saved, by this time almost five to six days have gone by, the post-mortem has been manipulated, God alone knows whether the CBI will find even a, even a fraction of the biological spe of the specimens that was littered all over. This was a crime scene which had blood, which had hair, which had skin, which had semen. The only thing, the only thing the criminals did not leave behind was either their passports or their Aadhaar cards. The next time any police force of a state wants to capture a criminal, they will say, Ab vakalat, vakalat nama mein sign karke jaiye. Criminals in India will have to leave a signed power of attorney or a signed declaration. We the perverted citizens of India are committing the crime today and hence you honorable police force come and arrest us. Without this being happening, any crime that any state government wants to bend and manipulate to its own purposes, the current Indian constitution is helpless in its front. The evidence have thinned out, public has been absolutely threatened, witnesses will be running amok, and from the musical chairs of the police to the CBI to a whole lot of jumbled up queries will come another aborted delivery of the promise of law and order in this great state of ours. Friends, if we as a people, if we as a country, if we as a profession if we as dutiful citizens who will be singing choruses in 24 hours time have a little bit of hope of rational law and order in our society, all of us together will have to, will have to stand up and condemn in the harshest possible way the repeated numerous countless incidents where our law and order mechanism is under the influence has been manipulated by successive governments. And there has to be, there has to be a concerted public movement whereby the police force who are perfectly intelligent, who are perfectly capable, they are one of the best professionals, but they are under tremendous pressure. They have to bring their bread home. They have to look after their professional careers. They have to survive. And it is the threatening, threatening the survival of this machinery is where the government is able to manipulate them. So unless we are, unless we carry the conviction in ourselves that the so-called modern India the so-called fourth or fifth largest economy of the world, the so-called mother of all democracy, unless this mother of all democracy does not give its citizens an independent law and order mechanism which is independent from the brutality of its political influencers, this theatre this tragic theatre, these tragic incidents will repeat again, again and again. Like all Indians, on the eve of our Independence Day, through this despair, we live in hope. Thank you.